great crowd is getting ready at Mohegan Sun in Uncasville, Connecticut for the 2024 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament Semifinals. The first of our doubleheader features the 21-time Big East Tournament champion UConn Huskies and the fifth-seeded Marquette Golden Eagles. Here's a look at our bracket coming up at 5 Eastern time on FS1. It'll be Creighton and the surprise story of this league, Georgetown. As we welcome you courtside, everybody, I'm John Phantom. My partner is Kim Adams. We come on the air with some big news. For the first time since 2020, and just the second time in her illustrious career, Aaliyah Edwards is out for the Huskies today with a broken nose. What is your reaction to this news? Well, we saw just how much Aaliyah Edwards means to this program, to this fan base, when she returned to the bench yesterday to a huge standing ovation. So just tough to see her so emotional. It is of note that she has not been ruled out for the entire tournament just today. But that leaves UConn with just seven available players today, and it moves a third freshman into the starting lineup in Ice Brady. You have to have seven players to play in a Big East Conference game, so the Huskies meet that requirement, but they're thin. Let's get more on this news with Megan Caffrey. Yeah, John, well, the real question for UConn is what don't you lose with the loss of Aaliyah Edwards? Head coach Gina Ori, I'm telling you, that's what you do is effective rebounding, defensive intensity, and just your stamina that Edwards brings to this group. However, he is confident in what Ice Brady can bring today. Thank you, Megan. It is a big spot for Ice Brady highly recruited and now gets her spot after missing all of last year just her second career start as our starting lineups are sponsored by Jeep. there's only one meanwhile for marquette kim this is the fourth straight year they're meeting uconn in the big east tournament jordan king and liza carlin know this stage oh yeah they are going to rely heavily on these veterans jordan a grad student liza carlin a senior they both had big moments in marquette's two-point win over villanova in the quarterfinals just yesterday afternoon Megan Duffy in year five at the helm. Marquette has never missed the Big East semifinals as long as she's been this program's head coach. She has the best winning percentage of any coach in Marquette history. That 110 and 44 record, good for 71%. And on the other side of this matchup, the Hall of Famer, Gino Oriema. Kim, he's seen a lot in the recent years, but he told us before, he's never seen anything quite like this. Yeah, it's just unfortunate that this, you know, carries over year to year. But we did speak with him before the game, and, you know, he seemed relatively optimistic. They obviously have some other great veterans out there in Nika Mule. Paige Beckers is going to do the jump ball today in place of Aaliyah Edwards. How about that? How crazy is that? Beckers coming off a 29-point master class with nine rebounds and six assists yesterday against Providence and she wins the tip for the Huskies over in the white Marquette in the blue. Liza Carlin was given a little chuckle there. Those two know each other from their high school days in Minnesota. And there's Paige Beckers to totally set the tone. Our officials for two Sissoko Stevens, Mark Rash and Rod Creech. 21st all-time meeting between these two. UConn leads the series 19 to one. Marquette did beat the Huskies last year. Well, we saw Paige Beckers win the opening tip and then just a little give and go action here. Liza Carlin fell asleep a little bit. Nice cut for Paige Beckers to tip things off. Edwards suffering that broken nose injury in the third quarter yesterday, so that pressed Brady into action. KK Arnold was hot yesterday. She misses. What did you notice from Brady yesterday? Well, Ice Brady, I thought, came in and, and was really confident. She was 50% from the floor. I thought she really attacked the glass, and that's probably the most glaring loss for them right now without Ali Edwards is what she can do in terms of rebounding. So Ice Brady is going to have to be dominant and getting after it on both ends. Marquette prides itself on rebound. Here's Nika Mule. An air ball. It's interesting because the Golden Eagles, Kim, they've out-rebounded their opponents, folks, in 24 of 30 games this season. But two of those six came against the Huskies. Obviously, Aaliyah Edwards makes a big difference in that category. Absolutely, and it, it can't just be made up from Ice Brady. It has to be 
All five players on the floor looking to increase their rebounding productivity. King is off. Three three-point attempts by Marquette. Three misses, but it'll stay with the Golden Eagles. The three-pointer's been kind to them this year. They're 12th in the country at close to 38% from beyond the arc per game. Yeah, and I think it's it's just something you want to, to manage and balance. Make sure they're good threes. I thought that last one from King was a good one. But also staying cognizant of if the shots aren't falling, staying aggressive in other ways to score. And Kumu with the left hand, and that was well defended by Brady. With the four guards, Megan Duffy said the one concern is UConn's ability to run. Backers all the way. Carlin turns. Offensive rebound for the Golden Eagles. Everything about Marquette thus far unsettled. Yeah, they just seem a little bit sped up right now. The crowd is into it. They got to just take a deep breath. They're a team that is very good in their offense in terms of staying patient. Whoa. King is way off there. Paige Beckers has opened up with the first four points of this game. We saw her score on a give and go cut, this time taking it herself. And she was big time in the quarterfinals against Providence yesterday, putting up 29 points and just filling up the stat sheet. To your point, she scored at least 29 in three of the last four games. Ashton Shade. Deflected by Carlin, Shade and Hare go to the deck and a jump ball. The arrows with the Golden Eagles. We have seen some physical games so far in this Big East tournament. Definitely some contact there going after the rebound, loose ball, no whistle. A couple of younger players, Mackenzie Hare, Ashley Shade. Skyler Forbes just checks in. The freshman had a huge game yesterday, a 50 to 48 win for Marquette over Villanova. Forbes had 12 points, nine rebounds, two blocks off the bench. I thought she was their most valuable player yesterday. Big time performance from the freshman. Now a catch and shoot, she's long, got her own miss. And Beckers is there, Marquette. They had four Golden Eagles tracking back to anticipate this. says she can hit those types of shots in practice. Yeah, he was raving about her efficiency in practice. Hoping to see it carry over to game, but she looked confident. That was a, a deep two. And we'll stay with the Golden Eagles. And we talk about this UConn team. To think that they're down to just seven players, which as one reporter noted before the game, it's the first time this season they've had to deal with that. Unfortunately for them, they've had to deal with that now three straight years. Yeah, it's just unfathomable to think about. They have five players who have been ruled out for the entire season. Another two out today. And DeBerry and Aaliyah Edwards. Just seven players available. Oh, my. Oh, Paige Beckers, that was really pretty. Mule. Got it. Listen to Mohegan. Mika Mule draining it from three off of some Paige Becker's theatrics. They are hype. Welcome back to Mohegan Sun, where UConn, without Aaliyah Edwards, almost fueled and playing for her. Yeah, the Huskies came to play, period. And Marquette just a little bit slow out of the gates, a little bit of Deer in headlights situation right now. This very pro UConn crowd really into it in the early moments of this game. So I think it was a good timeout from Megan Duffy. We've typically seen her teams respond well 
out of timeout. So for them, it's just about taking a deep breath and settling in, trying to just get that first bucket of the game out of the way so they can relax. One of the more efficient offensive teams in the country throughout the season, but 0 for 8 to start this one as Carlin is tripped by Arnold. We want to welcome our FS1 audience to the 2024 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament sponsored by Jeep. We're at Mohegan Sun Arena in Uncasville, Connecticut. John Fanta, Kim Adams, and Megan Caffrey with you. Let's set things up here. Connecticut, folks, is down to seven available players. Why? Aaliyah Edwards, their senior, their powerhouse inside is missing her first game since 2020, just the second of her career with a broken nose. So the Huskies trying to deal with that this afternoon, and they started as strong as you could ask. Paige Beckers with six of the first nine. Yeah, it's been Paige Beckers leading the charge. She did the jump ball in place of Aaliyah Edwards. She scored the first bucket of the game, and she has just been foot on the gas like we saw her yesterday in the quarterfinal win over Providence. So with no Edwards, the superstar inside, what's it mean to this game? Well, Ice Brady is starting in her place, so that's now three freshmen in the starting lineup for Gina Warrior, but just seven available players for UConn, which is pretty unheard of. There's a charge drawn by Marquette. Offensive foul on Nika Mule. Here are the injured Huskies. It is quite the list. Amari DeBerry still out with that concussion protocol, but you think of the impact players. AZ Fudd, we've known about that since back in November with the ACL injury, and then it just has compounded between Aubrey Griffin and Caroline Ducharme. You think there's not much else that can go wrong, and then Edwards has the broken nose yesterday, but she has not been ruled out for tomorrow, a potential final. Yeah, but just to look at to have seven players available and seven players out with injury, is at this time of year is just pretty crazy. And here's Gino talking to his senior point guard. You've got to be smart. We have seven players available today. I need you all on the floor. I need you all playing big minutes. If you fell out, I don't have many options to go to. I can't look to my right and see a bench full of all Americans dressed and ready to go like he has in recent years. Did you see Nika's facial reaction? She knew what was up. A little eye rolling right back to play. <laughs> Mule announcing earlier this week that she will call this her last finals, her last season rather, as a Connecticut Husky as Arlen hits. And that breaks up an 0 for 11 start for Marquette. And Becker has been attacking early, and this time she's fine. And right off the bat, the Marquette defense needs to shift to a mindset of keeping Paige Beckers in front. She's really gotten everything off the dribble, even if it's led to a kick out three from Nika Mule earlier in the game. But she is just breaking down this Marquette defense right now. And no help is stepping up to stop her path and make her a passer. Entering today, Paige Beckers with seven 20 plus point performances on the last eight games. That moves her season total to 21 games of at least 20 points. How have you seen her come on as the year's gone on? Well, she's just, she's fully comfortable back with her body now after missing the last season. And she's just, she's so efficient this season, shooting around 40% from three, better than 50% from the field overall. And she's doing everything. We've seen more defense from her this year, leading UConn in blocks. And we saw that full game on display yesterday in the quarters. Forbes looking for Carlin. That's out of her reach. And this is what Gino talked to us about before the game. This. Marquette team likes to run their offense, likes to stay in their sets. And for UConn, they're going to try to mess things up a little bit, push them off of their spots, make every pass difficult. And we're seeing that here in the opening seven minutes. Shade short. That offense has had a really successful season. They've significantly raised the game from last year. 72 points per game, top 12 in the country in three-point percentage. 13th in the country with over 18 assists per game. 
right now can't buy one. That's a block from five on hair. And again, Paige Becker's just trying to take everything off the dribble. Mackenzie Hare not sliding over in time. She's causing a lot of havoc on this end of the floor with her ball handling abilities. And Ori Emma kept it pretty simply. So look, Paige Becker just has to keep adding to the workload now. And she has come out in this first quarter with seven of the team's ten. for 13 in this opening quarter. Carlin can't get the bounce, and here comes Arnold with the four-guard lineup. They will look to run for shots like this, but Shea can't connect. They've got a foul, though. And it's on Brady. Just her first, but Kim, Gina Oriema said, Ice, you cannot afford to get in foul trouble because the cupboard is empty beyond her on the interior. Now, we just saw him get her attention. He's still, he's still giving her a coach's stare there. I'm sure that was heavily discussed prior to the game. But like you said, there's just not a luxury of a bench today. Everything has to be smart. Carlin had that altered. That stare is so powerful. You don't even need to be making eye contact to recognize it. Oh, Ice Brady knew it was there. That's where you just, you turn a little bit of a blind eye. <laughs> Pretend he's not looking at you. <laughs> Carlin Beckers is there with the block. That's the area of her game that she's really grown. Freshman of the year. Ooh, Ashlyn Shea just little jab step, fake left, go right. We know she can really shoot the ball from distance, from mid range, but that was a strong take from the freshman of the year. Hair. Got it. She is their sniper from behind the arc. A, a top 10 shooter in the country in terms of makes. They're going to need her to get hot a little bit in this one. 42% from downtown on the year. Fifth in the Big East. KK Arnold can't answer. Just like that, Kim, despite going two for 17, you get a basket here. It could be within five, if not four. Yeah, and this is, you know, you want to close out this quarter strongly with a little bit of confidence and momentum. That's an offensive foul. That's the second on Mackenzie Hare, their best threat from the outside. And we have talked about the shot blocking ability and how that has evolved for Paige Beckers this season. And then kicking it over to the freshman, Ashlyn Shade, on the tough baseline drive. Beckers with two blocks in this opening quarter, up to 40 on the season. That leads the Huskies. Mackenzie Hare has gone to the bench for Marquette with those two fouls after the offensive. This match is the fewest points UConn's allowed in the first quarter this season. Four on the clock, Beckers tries to go between the legs. Arnold with two, take Arnold. And that'll do it for the opening frame. Defense for Connecticut. UConn, just seven players available today. They do not care, they have come out ready to play Paige Beckers locked in with seven points for this early Huskies lead. Big East basketball is sponsored by Jeep. There's only one. Here at Mohegan Sun on this semifinal Sunday, UConn out to a seven point lead on Marquette after one behind the two time Big East player of the year, Paige Beckers. Well, the Paige Becker's experience has been on full display. She's off to a quick start with seven points, five 
offensive rebound. She has gotten everything done off of drives, off of attacks, but she's impacting the game in many ways. Look at her getting after it, going for loose ball. She has two blocks. Ooh, a little behind the back, weaving through the defense. Little hockey assist over to Nika Mule. Paige Beckers has come out with a different type of mentality in this game with her sister, Aaliyah Edwards, sidelines. Let's check out the defensive ability. She's given up a couple of inches in that matchup to Liza Carlin. Look at the line already. We are just one quarter into this game. Paige Beckers has turned things up. And how about the defensive effort? Short-handed. The five points allowed in the first quarter, tied for the fewest this season with February 7th against Seton Hall. And Marquette is one of the highest scoring teams in the Big East. There are some teams in this conference that average about 50 to 60 points per game. Marquette is third in scoring at more than 70 points per game. So it is an insane defensive performance. Lee Volker scores for the Golden Eagles. Let's send it back over to Megan Caffrey. Yeah, General, that last Marquette huddle was a lot more settled than the original timeout. Head coach Megan Duffy pleased with her team's defensive performance in that first quarter, saying, hey, we only gave up 12 points. We haven't even scratched the surface of what we can do defensively. Yeah, Megan, well, we were looking at the stat sheet, and UConn shot just 31% overall. It, it seems like they're really in control of the game, but the defense has been there, but Ashlyn Shade back at it with the big one. Ashlyn Shade from November struggles to Big East freshman of the year. Gina Oriema told us earlier this week her rise has been amazing, and they've needed it. Yeah, and, you know, three, well, really, if you count Ice Brady, four freshmen, and Ashlyn Shade was probably the last one to really come along, but once she did, it has been consistency. Forbes, the freshman, and the big game yesterday. This one is long. Beckers to a cutting Brady. Forbes fouled it. And again, UConn attacking in transition, even if they don't have the initial look. Ice Brady trailing the play. You know, Paige Beckers is going to find you and reward you if you run the floor. We talk about Ashlyn Shade and KK Arnold getting an opportunity with the other Huskies in AZ Fudd and Caroline Ducharme going down, among others. Part of the reason why Ice Brady hasn't gotten more and more minutes is because it's so difficult to take Aaliyah Edwards off the floor. Now she gets her opportunity. What do you think of that idea that she could make the most of it? Yeah, well, she has come out really confidently. She was confident yesterday when she played extended minutes in the second half. I like what she's bringing to the table for UConn. Wow. Paige Beckers, when you're that much of a bucket, you get those rolls. That's the type of day it's shaping up to be for Paige Beckers. Circus finish there. Carlin is short. They have contested. That's her seventh rebound of the game. She's already on double-double watch here early in the second quarter. Things are all going according to plan today for Miss Paige Beckers. That is a tough finish, falling to the floor. Gets the friendly roll, gets a big rebound on the other end. She's been ready. Already 11 points. She scored in double digits in every game but the season opener. Arnold is called for the foul. That's her second. And of course, the season opener was her first game back in nearly 600 days. So I think we'll let that one slide. But it, it's incredible to think that she missed that much time. And she has just taken her game to new levels this season. She said her faith keeps her grounded, keeps her humble, keeps her staying in the moment. When you've had the sport taken away from you due to injury, you appreciate it that much more. Carlin is fouled. And then Carlin with a big clap. And if that's on Arnold, yes, it is. That's her third. Well. Let's take a look here. So there's an aggressive double team immediately on Liza Carlin. 
maybe a little little contact there but <laughs> it, it's a tough spot for kk arnold to get in as a guard one of the smallest players on the floor to be back down by liza carlin who's six foot two so he was willing to put up with two fouls but Gino Auriemma is not going to put up with three with seven and a half to go in the first half. So here comes Caden Samuels, the freshman from Forestville, Maryland, top 50 recruit out of Bishop McNamara. And a moment we just saw there, the moment Caden Samuels came into the game, Paige Beckers went right up to her and kind of chapped, tapped her on the chest and, and said something along the lines of, you got this. That is a leadership moment right there. There. Marquette, we know they can be a strong defensive team. Nice discipline there by Volker, nice timing. Five on the shot clock for the Huskies. Samuels, who just came in, lost it. Third Huskies turnover. Volker to King. That's Jordan King who's off because Samuels got back. Now a couple stops in a row from Marquette. Can they capitalize? Can they finish consistently on this end of the floor to cut this lead into single digits? That defense was the reason why they're here. They held Villanova to 48 yesterday. Look at Paige Beckers denying that ball into Hare. One for nine from three are the Golden Eagles after that King miss. And look, what did Gino Oyama say to us, Ken? He said, I don't know how we're going to score the ball in the interior, but our defense should never end. Hey! Brady is fouled. Now, this is a Marquette team that is top 15 in the country in terms of three-point field goal percentage. And the length of UConn has bothered that three-point shooting. They're contesting every shot. They're staying attached to shooters. Paige Beckers was just matched up with Mackenzie Hare, making it impossible for her to even get a catch. So back to Brady. So highly touted out of high school. A lot of hype coming into this program. Last year, just derailed with the ACL injury. You Kim, with all this program to deal with, do you feel like nationally it just gets taken for granted that this program is still 27 and five, didn't lose a conference game? Yeah, I mean, I don't, there certainly hasn't been a, as much national talk about them this year for whatever reason, maybe because when they did have big non-conference, as a Carlin not sat down, but when they did have the national stage, losing to South Carolina, losing to Notre Dame, people maybe overreacting to games like that. We'll talk more about it after this. Gino Oriema takes a timeout. We were talking before the break about UConn season. So let's do a season in review for those five losses under some of the best programs in America. And yeah, that didn't even include NC State, who's now like a top 15 team, but they did go unscathed in Big East play, 18 and 0. Some veterans leading the way here, Paige Beckers. The Big East player of the year, Nico Mule leading the Big East in assists. So lots to like here. Aaliyah Edwards was probably the next in line to win Big East player of the year after Paige Beckers. As we take a look at their tournament resume. And we mentioned, you know, those five losses all to ranked teams right now. They do have six ranked wins, which Leads the country coming into this Big East tournament, eight and five against the Nets, top 50, currently projected as a three seed. But we've been seeing some crazy results across the country in these conference tournaments. How about South Carolina nearly going down yesterday? Iowa nearly going down in the Big Ten today to Nebraska. So you don't know what can happen in any of these conference tournaments. Notre Dame beat NC State, two UConn opponents in the ACC final. Caitlin Clark, the Big Ten most outstanding player, 
and Iowa beating Nebraska in the Big Ten final as Shade connects out of the timeout. Very confident she is with her shot being shot ready. Hair, you can't give her space. That was a silky one, high arcing. They tried to send a double team at her, but you said it just a little bit too much separation. Mackenzie Hare back in the game, playing with two fouls. First in the Big East with those 87 threes made. Brady in and out. Megan Caffrey was in the UConn huddle. What did you hear? Well, Gino definitely liked the first offensive uh, uh, situation that his team just had. He was nodding after they had come back because they had a lot more ball movement. That is one thing he's looking for on offense. He said, we need to move the ball. We can't just take one pass. UConn continues to be all over Liza Carlin when she catches it in the post, sending multiple defenders to her. And Kumu off on the three. To Megan's point on that report, and thank you, Megan, the Huskies, five of their nine buckets assisted on. You know where I am with Tolis. Ice Brady's a great passer. Caden Samuel. We saw her start the season strong with that jump shot. Caden Samuel's faked me a little bit out there. I thought she was going right. All of a sudden, it was one dribble pull up to the left. We've seen these freshmen have some high-level moves early in this game. Early in the year, she's starting the season back-to-back. Double-figure performances. Can maybe she supply something off the bench today as Beckers comes up with the rebound? At 14 against NC State, with Samuels. with UConn. Coming up on the Jeep Halftime Report, we will look at highlights from our game and send you to our LA studios with Rob Stone, Casey Jacobson, and Laval Jordan to preview the men's Big East Tournament, which starts Wednesday on FS1. The Huskies men, the top seed. Big East Men's Tournament. Need the winner of Xavier and Butler on Thursday. Here's Mule with three. Samuels with one, and Brady. Shot clock violation. Nika Mule missed Ice Brady. Ice Brady had a nice roll, kind of slipping that screen, but Nika Mule had her head, wasn't squared up to see the whole floor. It would have been an easy layup. What's your thought process for Marquette closing out this half? Well, UConn is really, Force Jordan King specifically to take some deep threes. Would like to see King attack a little bit more. And I think Liza Carlin's going to have to step out and get some space. That switch is home. It's Claire Kathis off the bench. Megan Duffy in her stands that we see so often with the yellow kicks, imploring her team to stay active on this end. Brady is fouled by Carlin. Megan Duffy does not stop on the sidelines. And her work ethic comes from learning from greats. She played for Muffet McGraw at Notre Dame, was a terrific player, had a pro career as well. And yeah, Megan Duffy is high energy all the time. We see her working in shoot-arounds when we have the chance to attend. She's got the high bun, the shorts. She's ready to step in and play herself. Think about the fact that she's been the head coach of this program now for five seasons. Took over for Carolyn Keeger after Keeger's successful run at Marquette before Keeger went to Penn State. And Duffy has just kept the consistency going for this program. Two NCAA tournaments in the last three years. Miss free throws and Marquette can get within single digits. Here's King. Carlin. 
little bit short, but that's off of Brady. And I, I like the look there from Liza Carlin. As I was saying on the last possession, they're really crowding her in the paint, and she's a player that has range. She can even hit three, so I think she's going to have to step her game out a little bit today. Carlin just two for nine. Place another off the front of the rim. Got it back. We got a whistle. A foul or a jump ball. It's a foul. It's on Brady. And now that's Ice Brady second. A lot of activity here in the paint. It's called on the rebound. It, yeah, it does look like Ice Brady had her arm wrapped around Liza Carlin's. Carlin fades, and now because of Brady really being the only post presence for UConn, she had to play off of her. Yeah, Gino doesn't have another post to put in the game, so he's having a gamble. Liza Carlin takes it right back to her. Nice little fadeaway. Becker just got it. Brady heaves without hesitation. That long-range jumper looks really smooth. Like, it looks like she's been knocking those down all season long. Gina Oriama did tell us she makes them in practice at a high rate. He's waiting for it to translate to the game. We're seeing it here now. She was 4 for 20 on the season from 3 before that one. Capus is short, and Samuels is there with the rebound. Kim, you think that second foul, another moment of adversity, it's almost as if this program gets fueled when they get hit with something. Yeah, well, it paid off leaving her in the game. It's a big three. She does look a little fatigued out there. She's not used to playing this many minutes. Shot clock six, seven. Here's Shade with four. Shade is a bucket. That couldn't have been better defended from Liza Carlin, who has a couple inches on her. How did Ashlyn Shade knock that down? And now this crowd rises to its feet. King turns, knocks it down. Two seconds to go, and that will do it for the first half. We've got an 11-point game. That was a tough response from Jordan King with the whole crowd against her. Several thousand people going right into the teeth of the defense and coming up with a big one. UConn has never lost a Big East tournament game inside this building. There's a reason for it with this atmosphere. Megan Caffrey is with the Hall of You are watching the 2024 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament sponsored by Jeep starting the third quarter of our first of two semifinals here on FS1. UConn up 11 on Marquette. Let's welcome back the third member of our team, Megan Caffrey. Why, hello, John. I caught up with Coach Duffy at the half, and she said she liked her team's defense, especially in the second quarter, and wants to see that hustle mentality continue here in the second half. As for offense, she said, you know we just got to keep chipping away and hit some 15-foot jumpers. Thank you, Meg. Well, yeah, we talked about that in the first half, just how tightly packed this UConn defense is. There's just a lot of congestion, a lot of size. They're sending double teams on catches, even without Aaliyah Edwards. So Marquette wants to pull out from that painted area a little bit from the block. And good, the good thing for them is Liza Carlin, their center, absolutely has the ability to step out and stretch the floor. King with a spin move. And many of Marquette's shots have been short. They had to really grind it out yesterday against Villanova. 50 to 48 win. They got the stop at the end. They really defended Lucy Olsen in that victory. Yeah, defense came up big. Jordan King just having a tough night tonight. I, I do think the legs, that's what's keeping her. She's been short on most of her attempts, just one for eight. She's got to get her legs into the shots. Jump ball, the arrow stays with Connecticut. Paige Beckers, 11 points, nine rebounds, three assists already. She does not have a double-double this season. Surprising. Very much so on the brink here. Two on her career. Here is Shade with eight. Entry to Ice Brady. That was pretty. 
Nice Brady sensing a bit of a mismatch there with some switches. It was Mackenzie Hare, a much smaller guard, fronting her. And Ice Brady calls for the seal. Carlin after Brady took a spill. There's the separation. Liza Carlin having a tough time around the rim today because of this UConn defense. That's where she can do her damage in this game. That's the 15-footer that Megan Duffy's looking for. Beckers is long. Offensive rebound for Shade. She's short. And I think Marquette needs to pick up the tempo a little bit here in the game. Play with some more pace, try to get some easier looks. Liza Carlin, not that time. But I like her, her aggressiveness to start the half. They're going to need her to keep shooting. Carlin, a unanimous All Big East first team selection. Also on the Katrina McLean top 10 list. Amazing her rise. Now she has had a real breakout season. She's been very efficient. She stepped into that star player role that's marked on every scouting report. Six on the shot clock. Brady from downtown. And this is what Gino Ariama talked to us about heading into this game. He just is searching because when you lose Aliyah Edwards, who, folks, has been so productive as of late, averaging 20 and 12 in her last 10 games, he said, how are we going to make up for a third, if not more, of our scoring? Yeah, it's shot selection going to be so important for them. Not sure if a deep three is exactly what he wants, but that is what Megan Duffy wants from one of the best in the Big East, one of the best in the nation, Mackenzie Hare. A couple triples in this one. Three. She hasn't missed from downtown. Give her 90 on the season. Beckers. Tough. Well defended by Rosen Kumu. Paige Beckers was kind of walled off there, but spins back and fades. Too tough. And Jordan King is looking for Volker, but throws it away. King, such a veteran. I think just, again, sometimes just a little bit of a deep breath. A little bit sped up right now by the UConn pressure. Just take, take your time to see how they're playing things. Let that double team come. Let things develop before you make a decision on the next pass. Fade pass to Beckers, and Paige Beckers knows her role has to increase even more. She's got 15 points. She's 7 of 10. She's playing the one through five right now. That time it was her and Ice Brady in a little high-low post action. Post page. You've also used smooth P this week as Carlin connects with the left hand. And that time it, it was a better look inside because there was less congestion on that side of the floor. It was overloaded to the other side, so there wasn't that ability to come and double down from UConn. What's at stake here? A trip to the Big East Championship game, which is tomorrow night, 7 Eastern Time, FS1. Beckers takes a bump. Blocking foul, and it is a shooting foul. Here's the high-low action, and this is just, I think, a tough matchup for Rose and Kumu, who's a really good on-ball defender, but the size of Paige Beckers is problematic in this matchup, and you see her get Rose and Kumu on the top side, call for the lob pass. Delivers it from Ice Brady. Beckers earlier this week getting recognized as well as the Big East Scholar Athlete of the Year. A 3.9 GPA in the fall. She does it all. I mean, we talked about all she's done on the basketball court, but... Paige Becker is putting work in the classroom. She goes back home to her native Minnesota as well and has volunteered at a local food pantry and a grocery store. Does that a couple times for your giving back to her home community. Carlin is off. She, that was a triple team there. Three white jerseys collapsing on her. Arnold found a lane. KK Arnold, such an explosive athlete. If she gets a step past her defender, she 
is finding that direct line drive right to the rim. We've seen her do that a couple times here in these semifinals. That's off Carlin's flag. KK Arnold with the defensive flag. And again, I mean, UConn is just swarming that interior pass into Liza Carlin. That's one where you kind of predict that you're going to throw it in there. They have to adjust. Maybe you kick it around the perimeter a little bit, allow Liza Carlin to pop up or relocate. But there's a lot of trouble going on in that block area. That's a steal by King. Fifth Husky turnover. King. Maybe a little bit of a sigh of relief for Jordan King, who has been a staple in this league for five seasons. Has had a tough shooting night, but maybe that one going in will give her a little bit of spark. She now has 1,798 career points. Seven on the shot clock. Mule back into Beckers when UConn needs to respond. Paige Beckers does, 18. Paige Beckers hasn't stopped moving without the ball. She's finding success in the post with some post-ups, using her length and size on some mismatches. No Aaliyah Edwards, and yet the Huskies are up 24 to 6 in the paint. And that's a fifth Marquette turnover. We've got a timeout. And that's the same pass that... Big East basketball is sponsored by Jeep. There's only one. The East Road Trip is hit outside Mohegan. Sun fans taking part in some shooting competitions and more. UConn up 13 on Marquette. Kim Adams, the Golden Eagles are trying to make this pass. Yeah, when you go against a defense as disciplined and strong as UConn, you have to be locked in on the details. The lost art of the post-entry pass, it's all about them angles, as Drake would say. Rosen Kumu has to take another dribble or two to try to get that into Liza Carlin. You see how UConn is just closing in on any pass in the post. We saw Nika Mule. As soon as the pass is made, she's coming over from the weak side to double team Liza Carlin. And it's just been a couple times now in a row that Marquette doesn't seem to be recognizing that, adjusting. That is a really tough, tough area to try to play this game right now because of how UConn is choosing to defend it. So what can Marquette do to adjust? Well, I just said it. They got to dribble over. They got to make the pass. They got to switch sides of the floor. You can't just keep trying to do the same thing over and over. That sounds like it's insanity if you continue <laughs> to do it over and over again. That's what they say. Shade? Sure. Megan Duffy keeps clapping to try to keep her team in the right state. But this Marquette team, they've shot 12 for 40 in this game. Yeah, it's a 13-point game with a ton of time left. That is why Megan Duffy is trying to keep them confident. Jordan King needs to stay active. Lines of car with Mackenzie here. They got to keep looking and taking their shots. Our next semifinal will be Creighton and Georgetown. Five Eastern time on FS1. Beckers is short, Brady battling. The Blue Jays folks are 25 and four on the year. Having an amazing season and right around that host bubble, if you will, for the top 16 in the NCAA tournament. Well, they keep trying and they keep failing on that pass. That time they did have a better angle, closer to that free throw line extended. But a lot of times, most times, a post-entry pass is going to be a bounce pass. They try to throw that over the top, and it sails into the photographers. Ice Brady now at 27 minutes, by the way. Let's look back at this first. So the angle is better here. But, you know, step around, bounce that in. Just really tough time with the post passes today. Arnold takes a big bomb. There's no foul, and Gino Oriem is asking, where is the whistle with all that contact? King, that's a ton of contact. 
It's an offensive foul. Taken by Brady. Continues to be a tough night for one of the league's best guards. Official, a little bit in the way of our replay there, but by the ending, you could see that Ice Brady was there. That was on the other end where Gino was looking for a, a call. Speaking of Brady, now at 28 minutes, the most she's played in a game in her career is 27. Yeah, she's stepping up into a big spot. <laughs> You can tell she's trying to push through it. She's breathing a little heavily right now, but she's she's trying to stay out there. Becker, short. Again, Noah Leah Edwards with a broken nose. That being said, if UConn is to advance the Big East Championship game tomorrow, 7 Eastern time, right here on FS1, Edwards has not been ruled out for that game. She'll be reevaluated. Megan Duffy calls timeout. We'll take a timeout too. The status of Edwards up in the air as this conference tournament rolls along. This week, as we welcome you back to Mohegan Sun, like the UConn women, the UConn men will be the number one seed in the Big East tournament. Creighton, the two, Marquette, the three. Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? When you look at the, the top programs on the women's side, they're mirrored on the men's side. These two. Sets of men's and women's teams, UConn, Marquette, Creighton, that trio, really great programs on both sides. Yeah, UConn and Creighton ranked in the top 25 on both teams. And, man, we were just talking about it at the break, John. If, if the Marquette offense could just be a little bit better, they would be right there. The defense has been fine. UConn hasn't scored in about three minutes. But Marquette has not been able to make up any ground on their own offensive end. Well, Marquette hasn't scored in three and a half minutes. Here's Shade. That one way off. And they chop into this to close the third quarter. find Carlin, but Becker's anticipated it. We know how locked in Paige Becker's has been on the defensive end this tournament and all season long. She's going to use her length to try to deflect plays, disrupt. Carlin with a liner. It was off the front of the rim yet again. Marquette scoring drought hits four minutes. Nika Mulepole, sand hits. She won't be credited with it, but give Ice Brady the assist for that bucket. She set two really hard screens to set up that opening. One on Paige Beckers, then one on Nika Mule. There was no way a defender was getting around that. The Huskies' largest lead of the afternoon. Shot clock at 10, one second difference between shot and game. Becker stole it away. And it was Ice Brady again who slid over so quickly into help. Beckers with three. Paige Beckers. Beckers madness! Quarter, UConn set the tone with defense. Marquette better in the second, but the third, it's 16 to 9 Huskies. It was 13 to 9 until this happened. 
This is just too good to revisit. Not a lot going here as the quarter clock is winding down. Just a ridiculous shot. She almost lost the ball. Two players come at her. She doesn't care. Over the outstretched arm of Liza Carlin. Nothing but the bottom of the net. Beautiful look at it from that angle. Great job by our crew. With that bucket, it gives her 21 points. 22nd game this year of at least 20. And how about this? First double-double of the year. Third of her career at 21 and 10. Well, without Aaliyah Edwards, who gives them about 10 rebounds per game, Gino was wondering where this rebound would come from. He's gotten an answer from Paige Beckers, who is, averages about four rebounds per game. 10 on the shot clock here. Here's Forbes, the freshman, with five. Volker with two. Steps back. In and out. Now, there's a sub storyline here in an 18 point game. Marquette has a net of 38. They are firmly on the NCAA tournament bubble. If you want to avoid getting significantly blown out from here, so they're, they're playing potentially their last quarter to play to convince a committee member who's watching. Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, yesterday I thought was a big win for them over Villanova. Two teams that are both hoping to hear their names called. Marquette had an undefeated non-conference. There's been a lot of parity in the middle of the pack in the Big East. But this would certainly be a, a big one if they could have a strong showing here, even if they don't necessarily come away with a win. Johnson has them as a 10 seed in her latest bracketology. Five on the shot clock here. King with a head of steam. That was altered. Shot clock's down to one and never reset. That's deflected off the of Golden Eagles. Back to UConn. How about this Huskies defensive unit? Absolutely. They have just made things so difficult for Marquette at all times, specifically for Jordan King, who is having a really tough night. She's, she's leaving it all out there. But everywhere she turns, there's a, a UConn player stepping up with length, with size, with a double team. They are completely locked in on the personnel. Arnold traveled. And that has Gino Ariema turning right away because he was asking Mule to give it to Arnold and let her go to work. Gino reactions are second to none. <laughs> We, maybe they could do one of those alternate TikTok broadcasts with a Geno reaction cam. Caitlin Cam was a resounding success. Clark and the Hawkeyes winning the Big Ten tournament earlier today. Kane Pollock. He just hasn't had it today. Two of twelve. So here we go. Here's a little bit of what she asked for, Kim Adams. And this looks like a coach who is 0-30 on the season. I mean, just, just a reminder here, the UConn Huskies are 27-5, 18-0 in the Big East. But he wants, he has a high standard. You think? Over 1,200 career wins. Only Mike Krzyzewski and Tara Vandeveer can say that. Even right now. I mean, he's, he's not happy about something. Continuing to coach up his group, which is obviously a very young group, especially today without Aaliyah Edwards. Three freshmen have made up the bulk of the minutes today, Arnold, Brady, and Shade. 1,207 victories for the man, and Paige Beckers is on fire this afternoon, 24 points. Her reactions have been on point, too. She pretty much fell into her teammates' lap, turned around, and gave them the tongue out. We'll see if our cameras caught that. Paige is on one today. Went right near Edwards, and Edwards is smiling. Joked about her, just how funny that she is around the locker room, around the program, has a great sense of humor. 
talked earlier this week that she's so inquisitive, Kim, about potentially being a detective. And she's aspired growing up to be that. She she always asks the question that that, that 13 or 14 year old would, would ask. Well, I just, it's great to see her playing with so much joy. She's having a great time out there. She is, I mean, of course you're gonna have a great time and you're shooting the ball like she is, but she's playing freely. I love how she's attacking the glass. That was her 11th rebound on the other end. Shot clock at one, and Arnold could not get that off. That's got to drive Gino crazy. Yep. Oh, she's coming right out. Wow. He is not having that. Let's go over to Megan. Well, John and Kim, as much fun as Gino and Paige have together, in a conversation I had with Gino about his guard, he told me, you know, she's just a kid who's been thrown one curveball after another, and she's made the most of it, which I really admire about her, telling me she's tougher than she looks in so many ways. Yeah, they certainly have been able to develop a great relationship through the time Paige had to spend off the courts, and we saw him laying into KK Arnold there after the shot clock violation. He has to hold his young players to high standards with the impact and the minutes that they play. He has to coach them like they are fourth-year players. She said earlier this week she takes pride in getting good grades. She takes pride in continuing to raise her game. Samuels from the corner is short. She said out of all the awards that she's won, Paige mentioned in a story this week, her parents were most proud of that Big East Scholar Athlete of the Year award. The academic side, that management. It's hard to win that honor, Kim. It really is. What if we talking about some of the off-court stuff. I know Paige has used a lot of her NIL opportunities to help the community. We're seeing, you know, the, the positive ways that NIL is having an impact. Six on the shot clock, Beckers again. Oh! Paging Beckers are these Huskies, and she is delivering. 27. Back to Connecticut. You think she's enjoying March? Beckers is flourishing. And even shorthanded, these Huskies are rolling today. And their head coach never stops teaching. As hard as he is on his kids, that's what makes him. There's Paige Becker's mother, Amy. Paige has talked so much about her mom, her dad as well, Bob, and their influence. And today, she is making her parents even prouder. Paige Beckers is just in one of those zones today, ladies and gentlemen, and that gave her 27 points on the afternoon. She is overjoyed. She's working the crowd today, and she has really turned things up in the second half. She scored everywhere on the floor today. A little turnaround jumper, playing a little post action in place of Aaliyah Edwards, sealing the defender. We have to look back at this one to beat the third quarter clock. Oh. That one sent this arena into a frenzy. She is three of five from deep, but we have to talk about the complete floor game, John Fanta. 12 rebounds, you mentioned her first double-double of the season. Three assists, two steals, three blocks. Paige Beckers, as complete of a player there is in this country. Oh, by the way, she's coming back next season. Another announcement that sent the arena into a frenzy. She tried to fake him out with it a couple weeks ago on senior night. Eight on the shot clock. Samuels got it. That's a welcome sight. Nobody was happier for Kaden Samuels there than Paige Beckers, who had the assist. She is feeling the love for her teammates tonight. Folks, we're watching an extraordinary performance right now. It's 56 to 29. Marquette hasn't scored in 10 minutes. 
And she does this. Paige blockers <laughs> the point guard. <laughs> Number four, UConn has four blocks. They oh. all come from Paige and a steal. Has the defensive player of the year, that was given out, right? It was. <laughs> We've got that in our next game. Kelsey Ransom in Georgetown meeting Creighton. Yeah, we still have another semifinal. Five o'clock here on FS1. We'll be with you in between games with the latest on women's college basketball. And Christina Dalsey, co-defensive co players. I don't want to leave her out. Of course not. That's a dime. And a jump ball. The arrows with Marquette. How did that pass get, get in there? There were like four players, like a magnet around Ice Brady. And Paige Brecker somehow fed that into her. You know, you think about this team, Kim, and you said, as Autumn Johnson has them on the three line, but their net is two. And it's easy to forget based on the score. They're missing Aaliyah Edwards, who hasn't been ruled out for tomorrow. I expect that, if not tomorrow, that it's not something that's going to keep her off of the NCAA tournament. That is this team getting underestimated this month? They just showed her on the jumbo front oh, here. And she gave a little reaction too. I don't want to. I don't want to give a, an answer to that without kind of reminding myself of the full field that's projected ahead of them right now. But you certainly have to consider them to be moved up a little bit. There's still a long ways to go in this tournament, of course. But they have been dominant the last couple months. Pottinger. Marquette has not scored in the fourth quarter. It'll stay with them. Here comes Ben Ford, and listen to this for Beckers. Huskies, 27 points. That's a veteran move right there, covering the mouth, knowing, knowing that the cameras are always on. But I don't know if I've ever seen Paige look this happy when she's playing. I mean, I know she's always smiling and giving the crowd reaction, but she was just extremely relaxed in a moment today. What a performance from Paige. The vibe around here at Mohegan entering the day was, well, Edwards isn't playing. We got bodies to the floor here. Jump ball belongs to the Huskies. Well, that could change the tournament. Maybe UConn could falter. Maybe they could be vulnerable. Paige Beckers took matters in her own hands and listened to this from Mule. Beckers with 27 points, 12 rebounds, four assists, four blocks, three steals. What a line from a point guard. She played all five spots today. And Arnold turns this one over with just over two minutes left. Just to cap them off, what's a big picture thought process with Marquette and their season to date? Yeah, I mean, I, I feel for them, you hate to end the regular season, the conference tournament on a note like this, especially because their offense has been so good all season long, this is certainly an off night. But I, I do think they've hopefully positioned themselves well enough to get into that NCAA tournament, but again, there might be a little bit of a stressful selection Sunday. They started the season 12 and 0. 12 and 0. A remarkable year. But after that 12 and 0 start, 11 and 7 since, they will be sweating a bit on selection Sunday. But with a couple of marquee wins, hope to hear their name called. As you said, that's a double dribble. 
But for the most part, Ice Brady has done a lot of good for this UConn team, replacing Edwards today. Absolutely, just the minutes she's had to give. I don't know if she's, did she even come out of the game today? Trying to pull up her minutes she here. I mean, that alone, coming back after missing a full year, she's used to playing behind Aaliyah Edwards about 15 minutes per game. So that alone, the stamina to stay out there, really impressive for Vice Brady. Up until the time that they just came out, Beckers, Mule, Shade, and Brady had played the entirety of this game. Wow. <laughs> winner here with the Huskies moving on. We'll meet the winner of Creighton and Georgetown, which is coming up in our next semifinal. An efficient offense meets one of the top defensive units in the country. Absolutely, that'll be an interesting one. They met just once this season. Just a five-point win for Creighton. Two contrasting styles. High scoring versus the top 10 defense of the country. Looking forward to that one coming up after this one. Stay right here on FS1. We'll have coverage in between games as well with highlights from all across the country on a busy day. And this fan base, one of the best in the country, rises to its feet. A scoreless fourth quarter for Marquette. Brady, exclamation point. Paige liked it. Paige has some great reactions herself. We talked about Gino. Final seconds here. For the 27th time in program history, UConn is on to the Big East Championship game. The Huskies held Marquette scoreless for the final 14 minutes and 49 seconds. I mean, that is, that's just an insane stat, especially against an offensive team that's typically very efficient from Marquette. It's hard to see them go out like that. But Huskies came into this one with a little bit of a, a dark cloud. No Aaliyah Edwards. They certainly responded. Ice Brady playing big time minutes in the center spot. Paige Becker's doing what she does best this time of year. Megan Caffrey has Gino Oriema. 